All right, hello all you crazy people out there. My name is Dragonite, and I have some explaining to do. So, probably the most requested thing for me to do in terms of Game Maker tutorials in the last year has been to continue my GMS2 3D uh, tutorial mini-series. And despite the fact that I said I wasn't going to be doing that anymore at the beginning of this year, I've decided to go against that and uh, finish what I started, so to say. So this video is going to start off where my original video left off. Um, if you have not seen my original video on that, I suggest you do that. I'll link it in the video description. I almost said annotation. Those are long dead now. Um, I'll link it in a card that should appear in this corner of the screen right about now. Funnily enough, I would also recommend that you go back and watch my Game Maker Studio 1 tutorial series about 3D, because there are a few things that I'll be referencing back from there, specifically how walking around works and how the camera's 3D projection works. And I don't want to waste time and repeat myself in that in this video and uh, worry about getting details wrong and have to start over and stuff like that. Anyway, the first thing that needs to happen is the ability to walk around. So to start with, I'm going to say pitch equals zero. I'm going to say direction equals zero. And I'm going to say Z equals, how about negative 32? And I've also, I think I did this before I started recording because I wasn't paying attention, but I renamed Game World to Camera. Just to clear things up about what it's going to do, this is going to be more handling the uh, the drawing, the 3D projection, than it is going to be the game world. And let me see. Yeah, okay. So the next thing that I'm going to want to do is have a look at this camera update script. And the camera update script, if you remember, is basically taking the place of the camera's draw event, the 3D camera's draw event. It's going to be responsible for setting up the uh, the 3D view matrix. Anyway, right now it's just looking diagonally from one corner of the room to another, and instead of that, I'm going to have it say it's from camera dot x, camera dot y, camera dot z, and it's going to be looking at uh, camera dot camera dot x plus the cosine of camera dot direction, camera dot y minus the sine of camera dot direction, and it's going to be camera, camera dot z minus the sine of camera dot pitch. Clearly my spelling skills have not improved since the last time I recorded one of these videos. And um, let's see, the z up the x up, the y up, and the z up, the vector that the camera, that the top of the camera is represented by is going to stay the same. Did I miss a comma somewhere? It looks like I did. Um, interestingly, it looks like, I couldn't find anything in the release notes, but this will work, despite the fact that you're not supposed to be able to access directly object variables in the camera update script. So if I were to run the game now, you would see that it works. Direction equals zero. I'm looking out at the... Um, the camera is looking towards the point defined by this, but to be absolutely safe, let me go and stop the game right there. To be absolutely safe, I'm going to create a folder called camera ac come on camera accessors, and I'm going to create a camera x x. Camera X. I'm still not used to how script renaming and stuff works in Game Maker Studio 2. And this is just going to say return camera the X. I'm going to do one for Y, Z, and the direction. I don't think you need to see me typing that out a million times, so hang on a minute. Alright, you can see I've added a bunch of scripts camera Y, Z, direction, and pitch. And I'm just going to substitute camera X. For camera for camera dot x camera y the script what did I just type for camera dot y and etc so excuse me while I do this little bit of typing all right there we go people have gotten upset at me in the past for skipping over code like this that I type out but I kind of like to assume that the people watching these videos are smart enough to figure out what I did in the time when I cut away and don't need to see me type out every single character. Um, Anyway, I'll leave that for you to decide. Uh, the next thing that I need to do is in the camera step event, I'm going to add the begin step event, how about, and I'm going to insert a bit of code here. And that code 
if I can find it in my notes on my second screen over here, that code is going to look like this. And if you have indeed watched my original Game Maker Studio 1 3D tutorial videos, this is probably going to look familiar. Uh, this is going to be um, setting the camera's direction and pitch based on where you move your mouse on the screen. It's going to end the game. Let me wrap this with curly braces. It's going to end the game if you hit the escape key because you won't be able to click the little red X on the top of the screen um, with the mouse because it's locked to the middle. And it's going to move around when you hit left, right, up and down, or WASD. So let's run the game again. And you can see I'm moving around. It looks like the Y is inverted for the... Um, for the mouse, I'm moving my mouse down and it's looking up. I'm moving my mouse up and it's looking down, but that's okay. I can move around. I can um, I can spin. I can do all that fun stuff. So this is working as it's supposed to. Uh, let me just correct the mouse inversion by saying instead of pitch plus direction, or rather pitch plus this expression, I'm going to say pitch minus this expression. And uh, there are a number of ways that that could be accounted for, but that's the way that I've chosen to do it here. The next thing that I'm going to want to do is create, oops, I didn't mean to, what did I just open up? I just opened up the help. I don't need that. I don't need this either for that matter, but I'm going to say, go into objects and create another object. And this can be uh, game world, no spaces or punctuation because you can't have those in object names. Technically you can, but it'll cause a mess when you're trying to uh, start actually programming with them. And I'm going to actually go against what I just said and go back into the room editor and go into the instances layer, drag an instance of game world into here. This is going to be the stuff that's drawn in the game world. I can close that now and I can go into the game world create event. And this, I'm going to need to do a few things here. So instead of using D3D, as in like shapes and models and things like that, and having them nice and simple to use, uh, you're going to have to create what are called vertex formats if you want to be able to draw stuff in 3D. And to do that, you'd simply start by saying vertex format begin. And now you have to define the things within the vertex format. Uh, the best way that I can describe this is that you are creating a collection of data that is going to mimic what went into Game Maker Studio 1's 3D model format. To do that, we're going to say vertex format add position 3D, 3D, vertex format add normal, vertex format add color, and vertex format add text chord. All right, I don't know why this is blue instead of orange. I don't know why the color coding is off. If I were to middle click it, nothing happens. I That may be a little bit of weirdness within Game Maker itself. I'm not sure. Anyway, to finish things off, I'm going to say format format equals vertex format end. And that is all that I need to do with the vertex format. The next thing that I need to do is create what is known as a vertex buffer, which is basically the new way of saying 3D model. Again, if you've seen my video on using 3D models in Game Maker Studio 1, that will probably be a big help for you right now. We're going to add a little comment to separate these two sections of code. I'm going to say create the model, and we're going to say how about plane equals, it's not really going to be a plane, but let's call it square. Square equals vertex create buffer. And after that, I'm going to say vertex begin plane with format. Vertex begin, as you can see, takes two arguments. One is going to be the vertex buffer that you just created. Uh, it's going to be square, not plane. I called it plane when I did my test run of this. And that's what I copied into my notes on the side over here. And the second argument that it's going to take is the vertex format that you just created. So that's going to be the variable format. And for the sake of convenience, I'm going to define a variable that says var side length. And that's going to be how about 64. And now I'm going to be adding a bunch of points, a bunch of coordinates to the vertex buffer. So each coordinate has a couple different um, parameters. Vertex... 
position 3D, which is going to take the buffer. So that's going to be um, square. It's going to take an X, a Y, and a Z. So how about negative side length, uh, negative side length, and how about 1 so that it doesn't clip through the ground? It's going to take vertex normal, and that's going to be square, 0, 0, and negative 1. That's going to have to do with the way that the light reflects off it, although I'm not going to address light in this video. Uh, vertex, text, color, uh, plain, C, white, and 1.0 for the alpha, and vertex, text, chord, text, chord, without the T, the second T, and that's going to be square, I mistyped it again, it needs to be square, not plain, square, and zero and zero because we're not going to be worrying about texture coordinates for now. Yes, we are. Don't listen to me. And for the sake of simplicity, what you're probably going to want to do is instead of typing this out every single time for every single point that you add, you're going to want to um, create a new script. I'm going to call it ver vertex point add, and not x add add with two D's, thank you. And it's going to take a copy of this code and perhaps you can say package it up in one nice little script and it's going to say description add a point to a vertex buffer uh, param this needs an at in front of it. The JS doc style comments that GameMaker Studio 2 lets you use are so wonderful. Um, the first argument is going to be the uh, the buffer. The second argument is going to be let me use a tab there instead of a space is going to be x and then y and then z and then normal x and then normal y and normal z we're getting to the end we're getting to the end don't worry color alpha x text and last but not least, y text. And I can replace every instance, every uh, instance of the variable square with argument zero. Copy this a few times. Side length. The first side length can be argument one. Argument two, not one two. Argument three. This is going to be. Argument 4, argument 5, and argument 6, argument 7, argument 8, argument 9, and argument 10. Okay, so now instead of having to type this a bunch of times, whoop, I'm going to have to censor that out because that contains my email address. Let me close my email client. I forgot about that. <clears throat> Now instead of typing this out six times for each point that I want to create, I'm going to just be able to say vertex point add. I typed axe again, and it's going to take square, negative side, length, negative side, length, one. It's going to take zero, zero, and one. C white, one point zero. You don't need the point zero, but since you're dealing with uh, color alphas, it helps to have and zero zero for the texture coordinates. Um, I believe I want negative one for the normal Z component, but never mind. And then after this, this is much neater than typing out the, uh, I believe it was four different function calls to add a point to this thing. Uh, the next point that we want is going to be side length plus side length one zero zero one and 0, 1 for the texture coordinate. 
And the next one is going to be plus side length, minus side length, and then positive one, and then one zero for the texture coordinates. And then for the second triangle, again, triangles, three points, it's going to be minus side length plus side length zero, and zero one for the texture coordinates. It's going to be plus side length, minus side length, and one zero for the texture coordinates. And then last but not least, it's going to be plus side length, plus side length, and one one for the texture coordinates. All right, and then to close this off, you can add as many points as you want, but for now I'm just gonna be drawing a single plane. It's, it's going to be vertex and plane square. I did it again. Anyway, that's all we need in the create event, finally. That's done with. And in the draw event, and I believe now that I think about the draw event, I'm going to want to set this on a different layer from the uh, the camera so that to make sure that the camera is drawn first in every step, in every frame. So I'm going to say add an instance layer, and this can be instance objects, instances, objects, whatever, and we'll go and drag the game world in here instead. All right, I can close that. Anyway, in the draw event, we're going to come over here, and we're going to need to do a few things. First is going to be, say, matrix, local variable matrix, if you will, equals matrix build, and it's going to be room width divided by two, room height. You'll see where I'm going with this in a minute. Z is going to be, how about zero? Um, X rotation, Y rotation, and Z rotation is going to be 0, 0, and 0. And X scale, Y scale, and Z scale is going to be 1, 1, and 1. Is that the correct number of arguments? Good, it is. Uh, we're going to say matrix set, matrix world, and matrix that we just built. We're going to say vertex submit. I'm going to explain what all this does at the end. Submit. Plane, PR, triangle list, and sprite get texture. Uh, what sprites do I have at the moment? I just have the sprite for grass. I'm going to add another sprite. I don't particularly care what. And it's going to look like let's um let's not do that. Let's say import image. What do I want to import? How about I just take sprite grass and turn it like orange or something like that. Uh, can I hue shift and paint? I don't know if I can hue shift and paint. Give me a moment, I'm gonna open this in Photoshop and hue shift it to like orange or something. All right, so now I have a nice reddish, I don't even know what this is supposed to be. It's like bloody grass or something like that. But anyway, I'm gonna call this, uh, how about Sprite? Decoration. All right, so sprite get texture of sprite decoration. I should have come prepared with like an actual texture of like water or wood or something like that, but I didn't. So oh well. And this needs an argument for the uh, the current sub image, doesn't it? Anyway, once that is done, matrix matrix set matrix world and matrix build identity. Again, I'm going to explain what all this does at the end after I run the game, see what happens, and hopefully it'll do what it's supposed to do. And there's a compile error somewhere. What does this say? No references to argument eight, but oh, I messed something up in vertex add point. Uh, I used argument nine twice. All right. That should be argument eight. All right. Carry on. Let's try this again. Take two. And I use the word plane again, instead of square. <sighs> I really should have edited my notes before starting to record this. I really should have edited my notes. Take three. All right, here we are. It's drawing the square in the middle of the room indeed. And um, you'll notice that it has a little bit of pattern in the corner of the sprite. And that is because of the way that this was drawn onto the texture page. And if you want to uh, address that, this is similar to 
if I can exit the game and open up the sprite. This is similar to the use for 3D option that you had on sprite and background um, resources in Game Maker Studio 1. But what you're going to want to do if you don't want that annoying little rectangle in the corner of the sprite that you draw in your texture, uh, you're going to want to hit separate texture page. And that's basically the use for 3D option. It saves the resource to a separate texture page and it doesn't, um, and your texture coordinates won't conflict with any of the other uh, resources in your game. Alright, so I've started this up with the uh, separate texture page option and the square is drawn as it is supposed to be drawn. Alright, so I can close out of there, I can close out of there, and I said I was going to explain some things, didn't I? Let's go to game world, and let's go to the draw event, and firstly, matrix build. This is essentially the, um, the transformation matrix, the D3D transform functions that you would have been familiar with if you had been using 3D in Game Maker Studio 1. Um, there's the X, the Y, and the Z transformation. If you wanted to draw this at different points in the room, uh, for example, I could say X, Y, and 0 for the Z, and I could go and in, go into room 0 and drag Let's say one over into the corner and another one over into the other corner. Oops. That's not the resources I wanted to drag in. Let's do that. And I could run the game. And I could uh, actually run the game because I missed when I hit F5. Alright, and now there is indeed a square in the corner. A square in the other corner. That's translation. That's 3D translation. Now coming back here, if you wanted to add 3D rotation, you could say, how about, oops, what did I just do? I just opened help again. I did not want to open help. Um, instead of 0, 0, and 0 for the uh, 3D rotation, we could say, how about, let's make the rotate with the current second. 0, 0, and the current second times times 6, because that's going to be moving awfully slow otherwise. Um, let's run the game again. All right, so I come over here, look at a square, and it is indeed rotating a little bit every second. That is how 3D uh, rotation works. And scaling is the last three options, X, Y, and Z scaling. And I think I don't have to demonstrate those because you're probably, if you're still watching this, smart enough to figure out how those work. This next function, matrix set, is basically applying the transformation matrix to the matrix world so that whatever transformation is defined in here is uh, represented in whatever you draw. This next function, vertex submit, is basically the 3D model draw call. Um, you tell it which... Uh, which vertex buffer to draw, the square in my case, you tell it which type of primitive to draw it with. Uh, you have, if I recall, the choices are point list, line list, line strip, triangle list, triangle strip, and triangle fan. I did a video on how those work a long time ago, and you specify what texture to draw it with. And I believe you can specify negative one for no texture, but I'm not entirely sure about that. And after you're done drawing, you call matrix set, matrix world, and matrix build identity. And that is the function that resets the uh, transformation matrix. It's the same as calling D3D transformation identity in Game Maker Studio 1. And I believe that's it. Obviously, when you try to build complex models, you're probably not going to want to add them point by point through code. You're probably going to want to import the, uh, the point data, the vertex data, through a 3D model you create in Model Creator or a Civ Modeler or something similar. But I'm not going to cover that now. I might cover it in a separate video how to parse 3D models for now. I really hope this video comes out well because I've been putting it off for almost a year. My name is Dragonite. I hope you all enjoyed that, and I will see you all later.